Hi everyone, I just got back from spending a full week in Tokyo, Japan, and today I'll be showing you what I brought with me on my trip, and also what I did. Okay, so I stayed in Tokyo in the Kinsho area, and I brought one suitcase, one backpack, and a small sling bag. Now I kept my packing pretty minimal overall in these bags, as I wanted to have some space to bring things home, and I definitely did, and I'll get to my haul later on in this video. So first up is my suitcase. This is one of the smallest Swiss gear carry-on suitcases I could find, but it still has plenty of space inside, and I've had no problems bringing it onto flights. So I packed all my clothes in this suitcase, a bunch of shirts, a sweater, a few pairs of pants, and a pair of shorts as it was actually pretty warm when I was there as well as my sunglasses, the original 2000s Oakley racing jacket. I also just wore only one pair of shoes, the Oakley Chop Saw Mules, probably my favorite pair of shoes right now and I wear them almost daily. I'd also recommend bringing a small towel, which I unfortunately forgot to do, as many washrooms in Japan don't have paper towels or fans. Okay, so that was my suitcase. Pretty simple, just all of my clothing, nothing too crazy, but let's get into my backpack. So the backpack I've been using for almost a full year now is the Harfest Mercedes Collab Backpack, and this is honestly an excellent backpack. Opening up, there's plenty of space inside, a laptop or tablet sleeve in the back, as well as a little zippered pocket, which is kind of a little secret pocket as well. And at the front, another little zipper section for more storage space with easy access. It's a very simple overall backpack, nothing too crazy, but that's what I was looking for. It's incredibly well made, has all the perfect storage pockets you could ask for. I think it looks great. So this was actually a vacation for the first time in a while. It wasn't a work trip, so it didn't bring my camera, my laptop, and I just kept things very, very light. I did bring along my 2021 iPad mini though, which has quickly become my absolute favorite iPad maybe ever. It's been so great for casual use and on the plane. It was amazing for watching shows I downloaded from Netflix, HBO, and Apple TV+. I ended up watching Severance in its entirety, and it was honestly an amazing show. Very refreshing and you gotta check it out. I also brought along the new headphones I've been testing out recently. These are the Dyson Zone, and they look super cool, especially in this colorway, and they sound amazing with awesome noise cancelling, great for the flight, and I like these quite a bit. And for the flight, I also brought along this inflatable neck pillow for sleeping on the plane, and this sleepy tea, which definitely does the trick. For charging everything up, I brought along this Nomad 130 watt 3 port USB-C charging cube with a few USB-C cables as well. It's pretty compact for having 3 charging ports and it worked well for charging up my phone, iPad, and headphones. No complaints here. And also, one thing I love about Japan is they have the exact same outlets as we have here in North America, so no adapter needed, just plug in, good to go. I also brought along my bag of washroom essentials and my toothbrush in my backpack. And the third bag here is my sling bag, which I actually did a full bag tour on in a recent video, so you can check that out, it's on my channel. But this is the Carhartt Work in Progress sling bag, and I've already showed everything in it in that video, but here's a quick look at some new additions. I have this Oakley Metal Card wallet from the early 2000s, which I absolutely love, and it keeps all my cards safe, and if you couldn't tell, I'm a big vintage Oakley fan. I have another Nomad USB-C charger, and this one is 30 watts, and it's one of their GAN chargers, so it's very compact, and a couple short USB cables in there as well. I actually did have to use this charger a few times during my trip on those long days navigating throughout the city, so it's great to have a nice compact charger with you at all times, and I'm glad I brought it. Also a Tide pen, which is an essential item for me. I also have this Satechi folding MagSafe wallet, which actually turns into a stand for your phone when you slap it on, and you can position your phone either vertically or horizontally, and I did actually watch a few videos on the plane with my phone, and this was very useful. The other reason I brought this MagSafe wallet, besides the fact that it's very convenient to slap on my phone and go, is because a lot of places in Japan still are cash only. I brought around 50,000 yen in cash, and I ended up using almost all of it on food and other small items I bought throughout Japan, but a lot of places, of course, do take cards as well, and you can easily get cash from ATMs throughout Japan at 7-Eleven. But be prepared, you're gonna have to deal with cash and coins during your adventures in Japan. It's a little bit unavoidable. I also brought along this compact, reusable bagu bag, which was great for bringing home finds throughout the day, and it's basically indestructible. And this one is a special edition MoMA version, which I love. It folds out into a full-size tote bag and folds up into a nice, small, compact package. 
And the bag itself, this Carhartt sling bag, is honestly the perfect bag for me. I've had it for close to a year now, I think, and it has so much space, so many little pockets and compartments, the section at the front I used for actually putting in my coins during my trip, and I love the kind of square form factor and solid strap. Now, the phone I brought with me is the iPhone 15 Pro Max in the natural titanium color, and I really do love this phone. It's been an amazing experience so far, I've used it for over a month now, and it's incredibly fast, the cameras have been such a great experience to shoot with, and USB-C is such a simple thing, but greatly appreciated. I also use the app Wanderlog alongside Google Maps to plan out all the places I want to go on each day, and have it all conveniently in one list. This app is incredible. It's not a sponsor or anything. It just really helped to enhance my trip overall and keep me a lot more organized day to day. Japan is easily one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. What's amazing is the contrast of places here. Tokyo is one of the busiest cities in the world and it can really feel like a lot sometimes, sometimes overwhelming even. But there are also so many areas in the city that are incredibly peaceful and calming. And also so many nice peaceful areas just steps outside the busy downtown areas. There are so many people doing so many things, going so many places, and the way that people get around is mostly by subway. The subway in Tokyo is honestly a work of art. With nearly 6 million riders per day, it needs a system that is reliable, efficient, affordable, and just always works. And it is all of those things. You can get pretty much anywhere in Tokyo very easily with the subway with so many different lines, you're covered. From the moment you land, to the moment you leave. I spend a lot of time in different places throughout Tokyo, from Shibuya to Shimokitazawa, Shinjuku, Akihabara, Harajuku, Ginza, Kichijoji, and so much more. Every day was an adventure. I also ate a lot of amazing food, even being vegetarian. It was definitely a challenge, but I think I ate and drank pretty well. Especially with those drink vending machines, which for the price and convenience are absolutely unbelievable. I also checked out a lot of different vintage and thrift stores, and I mean, a lot. But I didn't really end up finding much I was interested in, but with record shopping, I did very well. Of course, I had to stop in at a few cat cafes, which were definitely quite a highlight for me on this trip. I mean, how can it get any better? Tokyo day and night was an absolutely incredible experience. I spent Halloween night in Shibuya and it was definitely an eye-opening experience. After everywhere I've traveled so far, there's been nothing like Japan. Okay, so that was my trip to Japan and it was absolutely amazing. I had such a great time. Now I did actually bring a few cool things back with me, so I'll show you. Okay, so I went record shopping at Union Records and I got a few crazy finds. Dr. Dre introducing Snoop Dogg, Biggie, Juicy, Sky's the Limit, Rough Riders Volume 2, Nas The World Is Yours, Kanye Through The Wire, and Jay-Z Anything. I also got a bunch of CDs. We got Jay-Z American Gangster, Jay-Z Hard Knock Life Volume 2, Jay-Z The Black Album, At Long Last ASAP, ASAP Rocky, and this is actually partially in Japanese, which is pretty sick. Best of Radiohead, Rick Ross, Port of Miami, Lil Wayne The Carter 2, another Jay-Z Life and Times of Sean Carter, and Kanye Late Registration. And like all of these were incredibly cheap. I think the most I paid for a CD or a record was like, I don't know, 500 yen. So five, four to five dollars. I also bought this Super 8 camera from Sankyo. I think this was about 10,000 yen, so just under $10. I'm gonna get it up and working, I think. I'm gonna give this thing a try. Should be pretty sweet. I got this super tiny Mercedes EQS. It's incredibly detailed. I got this Miffy coaster. It's uh, very sweet. I got this white truffle salt and it is honestly incredible. I got this uh, Uniqlo winter coat. It's, it really is the perfect, nice, minimal winter coat. It was actually much cheaper in Japan at their Ginza store and uh, 
I love this jacket. I got this simple, nice black knit turtleneck sweater. It's honestly the perfect fit. And finally, I got this nice Mercedes AMG fleece hat. This thing is so sick. And uh, that is my Japan haul. This is all the stuff I could fit in my suitcase. Didn't really want to bring too many things back, but I'm happy with all my purchases. And most of the money I spent was actually for just food and experiences and I mean, honestly, it was just an absolutely amazing time. I just had such a great trip and I hope to go back very soon and hopefully explore, you know, more than just Tokyo, even though Tokyo was incredible. And that's it. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts on this style of video, if you like it, and also any suggestions for the next time I go back to Japan. I'd love to hear recommendations for food and galleries and just cool places to go. Let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching.